Standard deviation, that's the measure that we're talking about in this video. It's a really important statistical number. It's used in most of our stats formula. So let's talk about where it comes from, what it is, how to calculate it, all that good stuff. A standard deviation, I guess in layman's terms, like non-technical terms, it's the average distance from the mean. That's the, just the best way to say it. So if you, if you have a um, data set, you got a group of numbers, and you find the mean, you find the average, the standard deviation tells you on average how far away from that number are most of the other numbers. If you have a low standard deviation, that means um, your, if you're talking about test scores, for instance, a low standard deviation would mean your test scores were pretty consistent. Everybody was right around the average. A high standard deviation would mean you had a lot of variation in your test scores. You had a lot of really low, far below average, you had far above average. So um, that's what it's talking about there. That's the number. So I'm going to show you how to calculate it. So we've got this situation up here. We've got our six numbers. And the first thing I do, I want to do, if I'm going to figure out how far away they are from the mean, the first thing I have to do is find the mean. So that's my first step. I would add those six numbers together. When I do, I get 24. There are six of them. So I divide by six and I find out that my mean, the average number of time moms are getting up is four. And I happen to get a whole number here. You won't always get a whole number. I got a whole number because I made up the numbers so that I would get a whole number. So there you go. Um, so that's step one is go ahead and find the mean. Step two. I can scoot so I can add some more room. I'm going to go ahead and put those numbers in a column so that I can go through the next steps. So the next thing I want to do is find out the average distance, how far away they are from the mean, how far away two things are. That's subtraction. So one at a time, I'm going to subtract the mean from all of these numbers. That's going to tell me how far away they are. Now notice the order. I always start with my data point. We call these x values my individual data points, and I'm subtracting the mean from those. And the numbers that I get are as follows. I get negative 1. Oh, I don't want those. I want those in red. They'll show up better. I get negative 1. The next one gives me 0. That person was smack dab average. Uh, 6 minus 4 is positive 2. That was 2 above average. Negative 2 for the next one. Negative 3 and positive Four. So those are my distances. Now, in, if I want to get an average, we know how to do mean. It's add them up and divide how many there are. However, the problem with this list is if I add this list the way it is, these are my distances. If I add the distances, I'm going to be adding positives and negatives together, and they end up canceling each other out. So, in fact, if I add, added this list together, negative 1 plus 2 minus 2 minus 3 and plus 4, I'd get 0. And I know that's not my average distance. So, um, so I can't just add this list and divide by 6 and that give me my average distance because the positives and negatives mess it up. So the way the statisticians were back in the day, they decided to get a away from that. They would square all these values. That means multiply them by themselves. And when you do that, you get positives. And then they find the average of the squares. And then at the very end, they would take the square root and that's how they would get the average distance. So that's what we're going to do now is one by one we square. I'm just going to put blanket. Square meaning multiply them by themselves. Square all those numbers. Negative one times negative one gives me one. Positive one. Zero times zero. Two times two. Negative two times negative two is positive four. Negative three times negative three is positive nine. Four times four. Sixteen. That's the, su the average of my squares. Now, I mean that's the, um, those are the squares. Now I'd have to do the average of the squares, which means add this list together. And we get 34. I'm going to kind of write it over here because I am i don't want to scoot again. So the sum of all my squares is 34. There are six of them. So I divide by six. Um, do that in your calculator. I get five point, And then I got a whole bunch of sixes in there. I'm going to round to the nearest hundredths. So here's what it looks like in my calculator all these things, right? If I round to the nearest hundredth, again, that means I want it, I want to round to the second decimal place. I can't just cut it off. It's not 5.66. I have to look at the number directly to the right. 
if it's five or greater, this bumps up. So 5.67, that is the average in squared world, as I call it. These are still the squared numbers. So in order to get the true average, the standard deviation, I would take the square root of that. Square root of 5.67, that gives me 2.38. So my standard deviation for this list is 2.38. That means most of those moms, the average amount of numbers, the average amount of time those moms got up is four, and most of those moms were within about two times getting up from that. That's what we just discovered. I do want to talk about symbols here, some important symbols. Okay, well, there's several things I got to talk about here other than this. Number one, we divided by six because there were six numbers. You can only do this when this is a population. In the population, if your data came from a population, so you're thinking back from chapter one vocab, if your data came from a population, then you get to divide by all six numbers in there. That's part of your standard deviation formula. Um, so what we just calculated is the population standard deviation. So you, you would only be able to do that if you um, said, well, these are the only six moms I'm interested in, so it's the whole population of these six moms. And the symbol for that is this. So population standard deviation has the symbol of this little letter right here, and that's the lowercase Greek letter sigma. It looks like an O with like a little curly Q at the top. So that means population standard deviation. It's important that you know that symbol. I need to talk about the symbol for mean as well. So I'm trying to move all this, shrink it down, get it scooted. Scoot that. Now it's all kind of crookedy. I don't know why this is separate, but it is. Um, symbols for mean. There are two symbols for mean depending on whether it came from a population or a sample, but just so that you're used to these symbols because you're going to see them in other formulas. If it's a population mean, then that gets the symbol of the Greek letter mu. It looks like an M and a U. So that's the symbol for that. So that's what we used here. If we're saying that this is our population, then we need to use this symbol right here. So that's what would go next to my little number four is I would put that Greek letter mu, that's my mean. If your data came from a sample, then, um, so sample, then your symbol for mean would be an X with a bar over it. Your calculator uses these symbols as well, so does Excel. So X bar, and that's how you say that, X with a bar on top is called X bar. That stands for the sample mean. Um, there are other symbols here, too, or there are other words I talk about. This number, 5.67, um, it has a name in statistics. To be honest, I don't know why, because we don't use it in any formula. We always use standard deviation. But the standard deviation squared, or the number you got before you took the square root, that is called the variance. The variance. So in this case, it's just standard deviation with a square next to it. Ooh, look at that curly cue that is. That's a little too cutesy. So those are some symbols that you're going to um, use here. In formula, this is what the formula looks like. And all I'm going to do is write in symbols what we did in these steps. So one by one, we took all our data values, which we call x. So we took our data values, and we subtracted the mean from each one of those. So that's the first thing we did. And we got our distances. And then we explained that at that point, you have to square those values because that gets, away, gets rid of the problem with the positive and negatives. And then we determined that you have to add that list together. And so we use this symbol right here. That's the uppercase Greek letter sigma. It stands for sum. And anybody, any of you that have worked with Excel before, you're familiar with that. That's a, a math symbol. Whenever you see it, it means take the sum of. It means add together. So that's what we did. We added together all those dis squared distances. We divided by how many numbers were in our survey. That's the letter N. N is the letter we use in statistics to represent your sample size. And then that gave us 5.67. And remember, the last thing we did is we took the square root of that whole thing. So if I had led with that formula, in fact, this is what freaks people out. If I had led with that formula, you guys probably would have said, oh my gosh, I can't do this. This is too hard. But keep in mind, all you're doing is you're subtracting 
you're multiplying, you're adding, and you're dividing, and then you let your calculator take the square root. It looks freaky in symbols. I mean, it looks pretty sassy right there, but it's not difficult math. It just looks difficult. That's population standard deviation. I'm going to end this video, and then we're going to do the, um, a similar example only with uh, sample standard deviation. No, you know what? I changed my mind. Let's just keep going because you're already, you're already here. Okay, that's population, and you see the formula for population standard deviation. Now, same example. Here comes a big shrink. I do not know why this thing does not shrink like the rest of them. I have to shrink it separately. I don't even remember where it goes. Okay. The reason I wanted to shrink it is because now I want to use those same numbers. If I said this was a sample of six moms out of maybe 500 at a hospital, for instance, if your data comes from a sample, all the steps are the same. You're still going to subtract your distances. You're still going to square it. You're still going to get 34 when you add together all those squares. The only difference is Instead of dividing by n, which is how many numbers there were, you do one less than that. So in this case, we would divide by 5. That's because if your data comes from a sample, it's not perfect because you didn't talk to every mom. And so the way they um, account for that imperfection is they divide by one less. That means your standard deviation is a little bit higher. So this time we do 34 divided by 5. That gives us 6.8, and then we take the square root of 6.8. Oops, I did the square root of 3.8. And that gives us 2 point, if we round to two decimal places, my calculator says 2.60768. To two places, that would round to 2.61. So that's my sample standard deviation. So if if I said in the sur if I explained that this was from a survey, a sample survey, not a survey, a sample, then you would have to use the sample standard deviation formula. Let's write it next to the other one. Instead of using that Greek letter sig sigma, we have to use this little lame letter S. It's boring. It doesn't get a Greek letter. It just has that little S. And its formula is the same you're still going to take the x values and subtract the mean, only now we can't use the population symbol for mean. If we're talking about a sample, we have to use the sample formula. We're still squaring those. We're dividing instead of by n, we're dividing by n minus 1, and then we took the square root. So it looks different. It's really the same process except when it comes to the division step. But it does have a different simple, symbol. Excuse me. So little s for sample standard deviation. Your calculator, to be fair, actually gives you the, calcul the capital letter S. Um, so we talked about a lot in this. We talked about the difference between population standard deviation and sample standard deviation. We looked at the formulas. Don't let the formulas freak you out. You can do this math. You will need to replay the video and watch it again. Um, and we talked about symbols for mean whether it's population or standard deviation. We talked about the symbol for your sample size. N represents your sample size. How many numbers were in your survey? So a lot going on in this little video, a lot for you to put in your notes. Uh, I definitely, if I were you, would watch this video again.